Hey, how you doing? Okay, today's video is going to be an introduction to uh, generic models, okay? But this is going to be the first in a series of videos I'm going to do, uh, hopefully, uh, introducing how to create families of different categories, okay? So this is the first one. So we're going to cover a lot of the basics and the fundamentals in this video. And uh, I may refer you back to here, here again and skip over some of this stuff in future videos, okay? So like I said, generic models is where we're starting off. Okay, you can start uh, to create a new family either from the home screen here uh, under new family or more practically probably from the file menu. Okay, so new family. Now I'm going to generic model, uh, metric generic model. You may be using Imperial, so obviously make that alteration. Uh, Imperial generic model open. And I'm going to start with creating a very simple, just a rectangle shape. Okay, now. I'm going to assume nothing. Uh, we have a Y plane and we have an X plane. Okay, we're looking in plan. Okay, plan view. We're looking down, and that's a Y plane and an X plane. And where they intersect, right there, that's your insertion point. So when you create a family, uh, that's the point it's going to whatever way you have that centered or in front or behind. That's the point it's going to insert into your into your model. Okay, unless you change the insert the the uh, the insertion point, which you can do. So uh, if you click on the Y plane, you'll see here it defines origin. And the X plane defines origin, okay? Uh, but if I create a new reference plane, let's say up here, select it, and I choose for that one defines origin, okay? The other one will no longer define the origin. So there's always two reference planes where the intersect is where we're defining the origin, okay? So I'm going to undo that. Now, for any family uh, that you want to be parametric, right? To the, with the, you want to be able to flex, that's a word that's often used, uh, or stretch, you need to have constraints, okay? You need to have something to pin or, or lock uh, your, let's say it's a box, something to lock the side of your box again so that if you change the dimension, the box moves with it, okay? And that's what we're gonna do here. So in the Create tab, now this, is, this is the stuff you're gonna do with every family create, whatever the category is. Uh, reference plane, I'm gonna put one reference plane either side of the Y plane, and one either side of the X plane. Now you can see me kind of fiddly putting it there and stopping and locking to the one below and all that. That none of that matters actually because it's a plane. It's not really a line. You're, the line is just showing you where the plane is. The plane goes on for infinity. Okay. Now I'm going to use my dimension up here. You can also access that through the annotate tab and dimension. And I'm going to dimension from the bottom horizontal, the center to the top horizontal, and out. Okay, and then you see the equals. I'm going to click that, toggle equals on, so that now that these two reference planes are constrained insofar as they are both have to be the same distance off of the, the X plane. Okay, so we've set up one constraint already. And I'm going to do the same on these vertical ones. Equals. Okay, escape, escape. Now, I'm going to create parameters to control the dimension from here to here. And what we've done is we've made sure that when this moves, it moves equally across the insertion point, okay? All right, so dimension again, top to bottom, bottom to top, and I'm gonna to go to the left to right one as well. Okay, escape, escape. So I'll select this guy. Uh, I think I'll call this parameter depth, okay? So there's a couple of ways of creating a new parameter. The simplest kind of shortcut is to select the dimension and go to this button up here, create parameter, click it. And this is our dialog box for creating the parameter, okay? Now we'll give it a name first of all. Uh, I'll call it what I say, depth. Okay, I'm gonna leave it as a type parameter. Uh, type parameter controls all the instances of this type within the project. Uh, an instance parameter will just control that one instance. So if you have uh, three different types of this box within the same family, and we let's say we place one type three times, a type parameter will update all three, whereas an instance parameter will only update the one that you, you update, okay? All right, so. In, uh, sorry, type. Okay, type. Length is already selected or grayed out for us because we selected a length dimension. Okay, and so that's a, that has to be a length parameter. Now, group parameters under. You don't really need to worry about this stuff yet, but just so you know what it is, if you click here, these are basically just uh, places to store the, the parameter. And I'll show you where uh, that is now in a moment. Okay, so it's 
dimensions by default just leave it there oh yes family parameter that's fine leave that shared parameter is something else it's another whole interesting area to go into but uh, that's for uh, another day okay that's it okay all right so now we have a depth parameter and if you click on it slowly twice you can change the value and that's it see that that parameter now is now controlling the distance from that reference plane to that reference plane uh, and it's it's a uh, with this represent sorry this reference plane always centered so that the insertion point never changes okay uh, similarly i'm going to grab this guy new parameter sorry i'll just set it do it the other way okay so up here in family types okay click that put that on the screen so these are the parameters we have in the project uh, sorry in the in the family so the vault elevation is already there it's there by default that's the one we just created depth okay so we can update the value here as well or we can create a new parameter here, okay? So create, we call this guy width, let's say, right? And we're gonna do all the same stuff. It's a type parameter, length. Um, so we could change length this time because we haven't selected the dimension, you see? we could be This could be anything we want it to be. But we wouldn't be able to control uh, the dimension, let's say, with a material parameter, okay? So length, leave everything else the same, okay. Now, do you remember I told you, uh, let me just open that up and show you again that the group parameter under dimensions, see, the, you can select where it's being stored. If you look on the screen up there, it's uh, we've got constraints. So default elevation is there by default. And uh, dimensions, the two parameters we just created, depth and width. Okay, I'm just gonna change this one uh, width to somewhere else like other, okay? And you'll see what I mean. So see, it's uh, moving it to, to organize it under other. Now there's lots of reasons for that, that really we don't need to worry about right now. Just showing you what it is, okay? I'm gonna put that back. Uh, Edit, here's your edit parameter tool. Put that back into uh, dimensions. Okay. And I'm gonna give it a value. Let's say 500 as well, okay? Okay. Now, so we have, oh yeah, we haven't applied this parameter yet. Okay, so there's our dimension, okay? And now we need to apply that parameter that we just created to this dimension. So select the dimension, Go up to your uh, label drop down here, click the drop down menu. We can we can apply any of these, okay? But obviously the one we want to apply is width. So now the width parameter controls those reference planes, okay? Now, if we go into an elevation, it doesn't really matter which one at this point, front, let's say, there's a reference plane, okay? Sorry, reference level, okay, reference level. So if I go back into my project, right? If I If I'm on the, floor plan okay the ground floor the reference plane here is the ground floor plan so you'll see that in elevation or uh, these are all uh, reference levels so there's a ground floor when i'm in that floor plan that's the reference level for that plan so i place my generic model uh when i'm in that floor plan it's going to place on that reference plane or reference level okay hope that makes sense uh and you can offset from that and i'll show you that okay so Okay, I'm in elevation now in the family again. I'm going to create another reference plane across the top. Okay, and I'm going to dimension from the reference level and reference plane to the top of that box. Okay, escape, escape, select the dimension, do the same thing, new parameter, create parameter, and call it height. Okay, okay, and I'm just going to make that 500. Escape, escape. Okay, back into the plan, the reference level. I'm going to go to the create tab i'm going to create an extrusion okay again we're just making a really simple family here extrusion so it's a solid extrusion uh, voids or something else we'll cover that in a later video uh, extrusion now you can pick lines and pick the 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 reference planes or draw lines that this instance here the simplest thing to do is select rectangle okay uh, that's the depth of this extrusion is going to be it doesn't really matter we're going to adjust it in, in elevation afterwards so i'm going to go from corner to opposing corner and you'll see all the locks uh, appear. You have to lock these lines to the reference planes in order for the, uh, the for the, the the family to flex to to for to be parametric parametric. Okay, so lock, 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 lock. Escape, escape. Okay, okay. So I'll go to my elevation. Let's like that. Again, see, I can pull those little grab handles. I can pull that. Now, what I want to do is I want to align and lock the bottom of the box to the reference level and the top of the box to this reference plane here, okay? So, align. I'm going to select the reference 
uh, plane and select the top of the extrusion, or sorry, hover over the top of the extrusion and click. Now I have lock already selected, okay? So it's locked itself. Now, another way of doing it is to select the, the, the box and there's grab handles and just pull it down to the reference level and the little toggle appears, the, the, the padlock, and click it, it's locked, okay? So if I have a look at this in 3D now, there we have a box, okay? It's not much to it, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a good box. Right. Now, there's another, let me see, there's another parameter we can add to this. We can give it a material, okay? So if I select the, the extrusion, uh, in the instant, the, the, the parameter, the, sorry, the, uh, the, the, the properties here, the, there's a material. Uh, you can try and put a, a material in here, but you don't want to do that. You want to put the material in the project, okay? So we're just going to give it a material parameter, and then there's something for us to put the material into in the project, okay? So with the box selected, click the little gray box here, and new parameter okay i'm just call it material okay now actually you know what we, what we haven't done actually is we haven't saved this okay i'm going to save it now file save as save you should you should save everything in a, in a uh an organized folder now i'm just saving this in a, in a folder I have for uh families of this these videos but you should have a, a, an organized filing system so that you can always find your families again we call this box Okay, save. Now I'm going to load it into the project and close. Okay, now I should be doing this in a in a in a in a, in a plan view. I'm just going to stick it in here in 3D though. There's our box. Okay. Now if I select it, it's on the level ground floor, elevation from level zero. So you can control that here. You can give that. Uh, but no, we we could have put parameters in to, to uh, parameter for offset from the level or whatever, but you don't need to. Uh, we could put that up 500 in the air. Up it goes. All right. So back down. Okay. Now, just to show that it's parametric, um, that's the material. It's no material. So select it. Edit type. Uh, we'll give it a material. Uh, what we give it something a bit of color so we can see it. There we go, polished brass. And let's change the height to fifteen hundred. Depth to what? Uh, Seven fifty, and the width width to four fifty. Right, and okay. See, so it has a material. And we can control the height with depth of it. Okay, so obviously you could use that as a placeholder, of course, for anything. You can create a new type of it here. I'll show you that as well. So we select our our family and edit type. Okay, we have one type. We have the family, which is the box, and we have one type. Okay, so we can have multiple types of uh, of this within the same family. Okay, so we can duplicate that and call this box two. I give it a name different, and. Uh, let's say depth 300 with 300 and height 900. Okay. And um, we give it a different material so you can see them side by side. Uh, okay. Okay. So that's the other type that we just created. And create similar. I'm going to change to first one. Okay. You get the idea? So it's one family, two types. Okay. We can have any number of types. So the type parameters again control all instances of that type. So if I had 20 box twos and I change one of the parameters in that for that's a type parameter, it'll change all of those. But if I had an instance parameter like this elevation from level, it will only change that one instance I have selected. Okay. I've probably gone a, a bit longer than I want to do with this video, uh, so I'll cut it there. Okay. So listen. Keep an eye out for the, the future videos coming on this series, and I hope you enjoyed this one or found it useful. Send it on to somebody who's, who's trying to learn as well. And I uh, appreciate the likes, comments. Uh, if you if you want me to go into more detail on very specific things, let me know. Just put a comment in, and, and uh, I'll see what I can do, okay? Uh, and obviously, guys, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It really helps. And I'll see you in the next video, okay? Have a good one. Cheers.